year ago, most of the West saw Mali as a kind of cultural centre of Africa, a place for celebrated musicians and a healthy tourist trade. But that all changed when the bungled military coup in the South led to a jihadist takeover in the North. Islamist groups like Ansardine and Majal imposed a harsh system of Sharia law in northern cities like Gao and Timbuktu, banning everything from booze and cigarettes to music and dancing. In January, the Islamists launched a second offensive, sending the Malian army running and forcing France, Mali's former colonial ruler, to intervene. In the matter of days, French troops had recaptured all of northern Mali's major towns from the rebels. It looked like the quickest, cleanest, most successful war of modern times. But things aren't ever that simple. Now the Malians and the French are facing a vicious Afghanistan-style war against pockets of invisible Muslim insurgents in a fight with no real end in sight. This is the story of the battle for Gao, the biggest city in northern Mali. The surrounding countryside is still jihadist territory, and though the French control the city centre, more or less, every day new homemade bombs are found in the city, each one powerful enough to destroy a tank. The French and their Malian allies need to keep Gao secure, and to do that, they need to expel the surrounding rebels. Where do you think the rebels are? In the desert? Yeah, that's one thing I'm sure, but uh, after uh, the exact location, I don't know. I only know what uh, intelligence say the newspapers and uh, TV. At Gao's only hotel, the Malian troops seemed relaxed, even though there was clearly trouble in the horizon. I jumped in the back of a Malian pickup truck heading towards the battle through deserted streets. The French were leaving this battle to the Malians, but no one knew what to expect. A storm of gunfire was coming from Gao's central courthouse, the Palace of Justice. Soldiers milled around aimlessly, preparing for battle and trying to work out what was going on. It was a scene of utter confusion. We were taking fire from multiple locations. It became clear that there were more jihadists in town than anyone had expected. The major in charge of these troops thought there were snipers on top of the building opposite, so he sent some soldiers in to check. On the roof, confusion reigned as friendly fire threw us to the floor. I 
The Malians had worked out that the jihadists weren't just in the courthouse, but also in the marketplace on our right. They sprayed wild bursts of machine gun fire at them. The soldiers exchanged cigarettes while the corporal worked out what to do. Then he rang the commanding officer down below. The corporal wanted to smash the wall down with an armoured car and attack the Islamists, but his commanding officer wasn't so sure. The two men stood in the street arguing about how to fight the battle. Neither of them knew the enemy were about to make the decision for them. The jeep came to take the wounded major away. <laughs> now the corporal was in charge, they took the fight to the Islamists. We pulled back a bit while the armoured car drove up to smash down the wall. No one wants to drive through a minefield. The armoured car driver reversed down the road to consider a more careful approach. While the vehicles considered the next step, the Malian soldiers lay down a wall of covering fire. It was a few hours into the battle now, and the soldiers were beginning to run out of ammo. The Malians are about to launch a head-on assault on the courthouse. While the jihadists were outnumbered and outgunned, they weren't giving up. The advance faltered under the enemy's sustained and accurate rifle fire. They needed a better plan. <laughs> 